Welcome back. We're talking about the Fourier transform, and in this lecture I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite properties of the Fourier transform, which is how you can simplify convolution integrals in a spatial variable uh, by Fourier transforming the functions f and g. Okay, so the, the convolution of two functions f and g is defined as f star g, and it's given by this integral here, f of x minus c times g of c with respect to c. Okay, so you have some dummy variable c that you're integrating with respect to, and this x minus c, essentially what that means uh, is that as c goes from negative infinity to infinity is that we're sliding our function g across our function f or vice versa and we're adding up their product as you slide this across uh, from negative infinity to infinity. So this is a notoriously challenging uh, integral to compute in practice and so the Fourier transform is going to massively simplify this rather convoluted expression here, okay? So that's what I'm going to write. Uh, and in particular, the way that it simplifies is as follows. So if I have this convolution f star g, and I Fourier transform that convolution, that is equal to just the regular old product of the Fourier transform of f times the Fourier transform of g. Or if you like, you can just write it as equals f hat g hat. Okay, so this is really nice. If I have two functions, f and g, then if I Fourier transform this convolution, it just becomes a product in the Fourier transform domain. So convolutions become products through the Fourier transform. That's super useful, and in this lecture, I'm gonna show you how you can see that. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of heavy math, so bear with me, all right? Nothing too challenging, just uh, a lot you gotta keep track of. The way I'm going to show this is I'm actually going to inverse Fourier transform f hat g hat and I'm going to show that you recover this convolution. Okay, So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the inverse Fourier transform of f hat g hat. And again, if I inverse Fourier transform this, I'm going to get a function of space back. So I'm just going to be explicit. This is, this is a function of x. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this inverse Fourier transform formula for my Fourier transform pair and I'm going to plug in f hat and g hat right here. And then I'm going to work out what this has to be equal. Okay, so this would be uh, 1 over 2 pi integral from negative infinity to infinity of f hat, uh, and this is a function of omega, g hat of omega, e to the i omega x uh, d omega. Nothing too difficult so far. I'm just literally plugging this into my definition of an inverse Fourier transform, uh, and here's what we get, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to replace this g hat with this integral here. I'm actually going to, to take the Fourier transform of g uh, and I'm going to plug in this integral uh, of g of x e to the minus i omega x, uh, and maybe I'll, um, yeah, maybe I'll just write that out here, so my g of x is going to become uh, an integral from negative infinity to infinity, that's this term here, uh, of g of, and I'm going to introduce a dummy variable here. Uh, this could be of any function y, g of y, e to the minus i omega y dy, because we're going to integrate out that dummy variable. So I want to have a dummy variable here. This is really a g of y, e to the minus i omega y dy, that integral is equal to g hat, that's the Fourier transform of g, and I'm just introducing a dummy variable y, no big deal. Uh, and then I still have all of my other stuff, I still have my um, f hat omega, I still have my e to the i omega x dx uh, integral negative infinity to infinity, 1 over 2 pi. Okay, so all I did here was I took uh, my, my inverse Fourier transform of f hat and g hat, get this expression, and then for my g hat omega, I plug in the Fourier transform of g, of some function g of y in some dummy variable y. Good. Okay, now this is where it gets, uh, it gets a little bit convoluted, but the basic idea is this integral is a function, is an integral with respect to some dummy variable y that has absolutely nothing to do with x or omega, okay? Nothing to do, uh, sorry, this was also a, um, it should be a d omega here, okay? So my, 
my integral in red here has nothing to do with x and omega. So I can take my f hat omega and I can bring it into this integral. And I can take my e to the i omega x and I can bring it into this integral. No big deal. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my 1 over 2 pi integral negative infinity to infinity. And I'm going to pull this inside. So now I'm going to have another integral negative infinity to infinity, f hat omega g of y, and I'm going to multiply this e to the i omega x times my e to the i minus i omega y, and I'm going to get e to the i omega x minus y. Okay, I just multiplied these two exponentials. And this is kind of interesting. The way I have it written, it would be dy d omega. But because of uh, kind of the commutative property of these integrals, I can switch the order of those and I can write this as d omega dy. They have the same bounds of integration. Uh, I can swap those, no big deal. So this was a pretty big step. What did we do? We brought our f of omega and our e to the i omega x into this integral because neither of those vary with y. Those are not functions of y, so I can bring them inside. And then I swapped the order of d omega and dy. Okay, that's not too bad. But now this is kind of fun because this expression here, this um, g of y, this integral with respect to um, y, good, okay, good, good, good. This g of y function is not a function of omega. Okay, so I can move this g of y outside of this integral. Okay, in fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm literally just going to pull this g of y outside of this integral. So now I have my g of y here. I can't pull it outside of the first integral because that is with respect to y. And now, if you look at this uh, expression on this inner integral here, this whole expression is the inverse Fourier transform of f evaluated at x minus y. Okay, I'm going to let you convince yourself of this. Um, if I take the inverse Fourier transform of f hat omega, it would be this expression, except instead of an x here, I have an x minus y. So instead of f of x, I'm going to get f of x minus y. So this whole thing is going to equal f of x minus y, okay, that whole red expression, that's times a g of y, and I'm integrating this whole thing minus infinity to infinity with respect to y. Okay, so I've recovered my formula for a convolution in this last step. And there's something I kind of, uh, I kind of messed up here, I'm being a little sloppy. This one over two pi would need to be a part of this inverse uh, Fourier transform integral. Remember, this, this integral here has a 1 over 2 pi, so I'm going to use this 1 over 2 pi when I write this integral as f of x minus y. Okay? Whew. All right, so that's a little bit convoluted. Um, that's not uh, super simple. In fact, I'm going to just go through this one more time, just kind of walk you through all of these steps. Um, but the, the upshot is that if I take some convolution of f and g, when I Fourier transform that convolution, I just get the products uh, of the individual Fourier transforms of f and the Fourier transform of g, which in my opinion is much, much simpler than doing all of this integral nonsense. The way we saw that was we took this f hat g hat and we inverse Fourier transformed and we showed that what you recover is this uh, definition of the convolution, okay? So we, we literally plugged in f hat and g hat to this definition here. Okay, we rearranged some of the integrals. We, we replaced g hat with our Fourier transform here. Uh, we rearranged some integrals. We brought in our 1 over 2 pi factor here. Uh, and we find that this integral with this 1 over 2 pi is just f of x minus y times g of y. And we have an integral from negative infinity to infinity. So this is literally our convolution of g with respect to f. Um, yeah, that's exactly what this is here. And so this equals um, equals f star g, okay? So the inverse Fourier transform of f hat g hat is equal to f star g, which means that if I Fourier transform this, I would get f hat times g hat, 
okay? This is really, really useful, but we're gonna find in lots of partial differential equations like the heat equation, the solution of the heat equation is going to involve some convolution integral of maybe my initial condition with a Gaussian uh, diffusion kernel. And it's gonna be a lot easier to compute that by Fourier transforming those functions, my, my diffusion kernel, my Gaussian diffusion kernel, and my initial conditions. So it's gonna be a lot easier to work in the Fourier transform domain for things like the heat equation, where we have the solution easily represented as a convolution integral, or naturally represented as a convolution integral. Okay, thank you.